Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Melbourne launch of the Mildura Motorsport and Community Precinct. Firstly, I would like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we are meeting. I pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and the elders from other communities who may be here today. My name's Cameron Vandendungen, and I have the honour of being your Master of Ceremonies this evening as we are set to unveil one of the most exciting motoring developments that Victoria has seen in decades. We haven't seen anything like this for around 30 years, so this is very, very exciting times. Looking around the room, and I've seen quite a few people, I said hello to most of you when you came in, I can see we've got a great number of heavy hitters, not only from government, but sport and industry as well. So thank you very much to everyone that's taken the time to come here and discuss what will be a massive opportunity for not only the people of Mildura, but also all of those in surrounding areas and also anyone that has a uh, passion for cars and motoring, because this will bring people from far and wide. The Mildura Motorsport and Community Precinct project has been in development for around a decade. So this is not something that's just come as a flash in the pan. This has been worked on for quite some time. It's uh, received a great deal, oh sorry, what I was gonna say is uh, it's been in development for a decade, it's now shovel ready. So tonight, what we're hoping to achieve is to take this project from being shovel ready and taking those next few steps. We'll keep going, that bell will continue for quite a while, so stay with me. Um, it'll go from shovel ready and hopefully, as of tonight, we'll start taking those next steps to start digging some dirt and getting this project into reality. Over the past decade, the project has received a great deal of community support, but not just from the local community. It's also received the support of council. Great to see people from council here tonight. Also from government, industry and motorsport bodies, both two and four wheels, and we will hear from both of them a little later on. We've got some very special guests and presenters tonight, and I'll ensure that you do have some time for questions at the end. But in order to keep this relatively succinct, if you can please wait till the end of the presentations before we do have those questions, I will make sure you do have that time available to you. So we'll get underway, open the batting. It is cricket season after all. If I could please welcome up to the stage, and would you please give a warm welcome to the Mayor of Mildura, newly elected Mayor of Mildura, Mark Eckel, as well as Councillor Glenn Milne. Motorsport is what we're here about this evening and motorsport is what Mildura excels at. And uh, Mildura's produced at the moment, if we're talking um, racing cars, three current top level supercar drivers uh, in Cam Waters, Rick Kelly, Bathurst winner, Todd Kelly, Bathurst winner, Cam. I hope that um, you're up there with the Bath Bathurst winners very, very soon, mate. 2018, be a good trick. Um, Larry Perkins, six times Bathurst winner and Formula One driver, and you can go back in the Perkins family history with the Round Australia rallies, etc. We've also got top fuel drag racers, Darren Morgan, Phil Lamartina, and uh, they're certainly very, very quick. World Speedway champion, Jason Crump, his father, Phil Crump, um, Lee Adams, great speedway riders come out of Mildura. Motorbike champions in other areas, superbike champion, Josh Waters. Josh is down the back with Cam Waters. Yeah, there's something in that, um, that family, I don't know. They put them near a motorbike or anything with a motor, uh, including their parents. Um, we've also got up and coming rider, Ned Forkhead, young fellow that's got a great future in front of him. And uh, he had to go on the uh, dirt track on the weekend and he was right out the front and uh, I think he borrowed somebody's 570 you know, motorbike jumped on that and uh, was leading the pack, so that was good to see. Off-road, we've got John Hedricks, uh, around Australia, I don't know how many times he's won that on bikes and in cars, water skiing champions, boat racing, wakeboard, we've got Beck Gange, if you're watching the TV, they're on, um, what's it called, my instant hotel. Um, fantastic champions that have come out of our area, and the list goes on. I had a desert race, Phil's entries in about 15 minutes, literally, each year. In fact, um, PayPal cut their account because so much money came into it that quick last year that they thought it was a scam. And um, they shut it down and the guys were in all sorts of trouble because people couldn't actually pay their entry fees to enter. Um, so Toby Price, uh, which many of you will know, has uh, won that a number of times. 
and it's one of the hardest and toughest uh, races in the, in the country. This project that we're looking at this evening will build on this huge reputation and provide tens of millions of dollars into our economy in Mildura. It'll fill our tourist accommodation and provide jobs for our community. And uh, around, I think it's uh, eight, 900 eventually if we build the whole complex, um, but about six in the first stage, Martin, I think that's correct. The project started as a petition about 10 years ago um, with locals, resulting in the North West Victorian Motorsports Feasibility Study, then the Australian Motorsport Raceways Benchmark Review, and now a full-blown business case and stage development with an investment prospectus, which is out at the back there. We've received excellent support from our motorsport groups, uh, CAMS particularly, Eugene's here this evening, uh, also from the state government. And again, I mentioned there's uh, quite a number of ministers that uh, every time they come to Mildura, they've asked me, you know, how's it going? And uh, they're keeping an eye on it, so they're very interested. Um, the, uh, the project is shovel ready, um, and we actually need to see it develop very quickly. Um, for our community, we've got a lot of things up there, but we haven't got a uh, racetrack to uh, produce some more of those champions. Council has supported this project, and it's easy to see why the job creation numbers, the financial impact on our community are immense, and uh, if you compare that to the input cost, um, then our community will be on a, a winner if we can put this together. So we have the champions, We've got the accommodation, there's plenty of accommodation up there, plenty of houses for sale, units, anybody wants to come up, spend some money, good place. We've got the wonderful Murray River and um, it is extremely healthy, extremely fantastic. We've got houseboats, we've got fishing. So if you want to come somewhere for a holiday, just come up and have a look anyway so you know what it's all about. We've got flights, we've got uh, I think eight or nine flights in and out of Melbourne every day. We've got flights to Sydney, in and out every day, flights to Adelaide, flights to Broken Hill. So we're very well connected. We have amazing weather, not like this. It's not muggy and sweaty and horrible. It's sunshine, beautiful, clear. Come up again, Mildura weather. Look, if you're not going to build the racetrack, come up for a holiday anyway. Um, and uh, we've got food, fantastic food, good restaurants. We've got wine, plenty of wine. We've got some wine out the back. And we've even got coffee and a whole lot of that. So that's extremely important these days. Now all we need is the money. So uh, I hope you enjoy the presentation. We're certainly excited about what we've got to offer. And uh, we're looking forward to be able to build our motor racing track and uh, see people enjoy the wonderful part of Victoria that we enjoy. So thank you very much. Let's take a deeper dive now into this project, this wonderful project. So I'd like you to please join me in welcoming the General Manager of Community for the Mildura Rural City Council, Mr Martin Horson. In, in, in some ways the motorsports people, we're, I guess we're preaching to the converted, but for those that know what the contribution this may well be in, in terms of our economics, it is quite significant. We'll just play the um, video to give you an insight.
So the full, full master plan is looking at over a $80 million investment once we're all said and done and everything's been completed. Obviously this is the first stage of that process. So our whole, what we do have in Mildura is a lot of land and that is something that uh, Metropolitan Councils will be struggling with uh, now and into the future, but we do have a, a significant piece of land out there. Um, it's over 500 hectares, which for us doesn't seem that much, but I know that's uh, quite a significant number for, for anyone living in inner city Melbourne. The, um, the site has been uh, done a lot of work with the workup of all the studies and so forth that we have to do. We've had environmental impacts, we've had um, cultural overlays, we've done all that work to get it to a, a point where it is shovel ready. Um, the facility itself is, uh, will be all encompassing when it's said and done. One of the things in Mildura we have, and um, Councillor Glenn's alluded to, it is a passionate culture around motorsports. And that's something we can't put in a business case, but through the presentations and some of our speakers tonight, you'll realise how powerful this is. One of the goals of the master plan is to consolidate all our motorsports. So I don't think there's many rural sit towns that have two, a motorsports, um, a motor speedway, as well as a bike speedway. Um, Obviously, the Olympic Park is world famous and it's something that we cherish. And so our whole idea is over time that we would consolidate our motorsports um, in the one site. So it would include car speedway, um, it would include our karting track, our uh, motorbike speedway, our motocross speedway, go-karts, jet boats, the whole would be in the one precinct. And on a 500 site, there is plenty of room to do that. That maximises the benefits you get out of facility management. You can co-locate, co-utilise, and it would all build, build on the precinct. Uh, there's already a drag strip out there, and um, that's obviously well recognised, we, and we will be building on that infrastructure. The actual stage one, and this is what we're talking about at the moment, the stage one of that, the, the main thing is to build the three kilometre uh, circuit, and. Uh, uh, talking with Ma Mark Scase, he said you can spend 21 millions and build a good motorsports track, but you can just as well build one that's not so popular. We want to make sure we get it right. Um, we've listened to the industry, we've, we've listened to um, the authorities, and CAMS especially have been critical, and thank you to Eugene for providing his input, as well as Motorcycling Australia. We're at the point now where we've got a broad concept of what we need. We will now be looking at getting that peer review and really going into that detailed design. But critical is to get some investors on board, both government and private. So that's really um, the stage we're at now. So the first stage includes the race circuit, the uh, amenities around uh, the race circuit, a skid pan, uh, parking, roads, infrastructure, all the services, probably the boring stuff a little bit with the services that you have to um, put in place to get there. The other thing is we're having a driver trainage facility. That's already separately funded and ready to go. So that would bring in, um, we have a lot of uh, uh, driver training that happens in a rural city with trucks and so forth, um, and that, that's already in train. Uh, camping grounds and amenities. So stage one would get to, your get to the point where you've got an operating facility um, that um, an operator would be able to invest in and obviously um, uh, develop from there. Here's the funding and the value proposition. Um, it's a net, uh, net capital cost at the moment of 21 million. The full master plan, as I've said, is uh, just over 80 million. Now this is, comes back to the why, and this is very important. Now when we're, when we're talking to the converted, yes, it's about the motorsports track, but it's really about the jobs created the construction and the tourism, both indirect and direct. And this is what we need to sell to the community and also the value proposition to government, both local, state and federal, is that economic diversity that it brings to the community. So over 300 jobs in stage one, and obviously once it's um, uh, fully implemented, there's nearly 1,000 jobs. Uh, the ne ec economic benefit looking at around 160 million, and then you've got the full uh, implementation figures as there. Significantly is the cost-benefit ratio. There is not many projects that sit in the 7.3, so the amount of capital you put in and the return on investment from government, and that is significant. Um, for example, a sporting stadium or a, um, a, say, an arts centre or something like that will hover around the two, maybe three if you're 
you're lucky. Um, so this, this is why this thing is such an important thing for us in that that cost-benefit ratio is, is quite remarkable. And, and for, the, for the people out there to say, well, you're coming from a low socioeconomic community, how does that make a difference? Why is motorsports going to provide us with this answer? That's what really comes out in the numbers when we start looking seriously at it. Um, here's the proposed funding model. None of this is cast in stone, but we believe this puts the best proposition to both government and a private investor. There's different numbers and different offers, uh, different offers in the business case, and they're scaled up depending on what option uh, uh, you choose. Uh, we believe this is a, a fair and reasonable offer, um, both from government and also the private investor. So we're looking at a $13 million state and federal government uh, investment, Mildura City Council of $2 million. Two million plus all the other that goes along with that, by the way, once you're dealing with a local authority, I'm sure those that know about that would know what else you need to uh, contribute from a local government perspective, and a private investment of, a, of around 6.5 million to give you that first, um, first level investment. Um, the, the, the salient figure at the, there at the bottom there is a return on investment, and we believe you'll get that in the first five years. Uh, a 24% uh, return on investment. Um, the business case is quite thorough. It's been, it's been prepared in line with Treasury and Finance requirements, um, and uh, so that's obviously for government funding, but it also makes a lot of sense for a private investor to really have a close look at that and see if those numbers uh, stack up. So our timelines, now these are indicative depending on what's happening, but we're, we've opened this up uh, in November to February. Now we're, we're willing to talk to any uh, developers that uh, are interested in this. We're giving a window until February to really get this started. We're looking at uh, around March and April, we're looking at putting out a formal expression of interest to really sort of create a crescendo, if you like, to saying, well, we are serious. One of the major reasons for that is we want to be locked and loaded for the next Better Building Region Fund, which is a federal government fund, so that we can then put in a formal government submission for building better regions. We want to lock in the state over that period, but that's, um, that's critical for us. And you don't get a Guernsey unless you've got funding partners locked in for federal funding. So you have to get that, you have to get that locked in. Um, the further information, and um, obviously we can't go into too much detail up here tonight because we don't have, but the, the full business case is very detailed. It's, been, it's a quality document, it's been uh, peer reviewed, it's, uh, it's got a lot of information out there. Uh, and for any investor that would be interested, I'm sure we'd be able to support and take you through, uh, take you through the document. We do have two. We have the confidential version and the um, a more public version. Um, obviously, the confidential version goes right into the bare bones of what we're really on about, and that is commercial and confidence. But obviously, we enter into agreements and arrangements for you to have a look at uh, have a look at that document. Um, there's council staff in the room tonight. Uh, there's a prospectus and there's also uh, just making direct contact with us and we'd be welcome to hear from anyone. So we've seen the numbers, now let's talk about this passion and the, uh, the sport itself and the support that this, uh, this project is receiving. Uh, the first phase, as we've heard now, is a bitumen circuit and uh, who better than to take us through uh, what this means for a region than some subject matter experts. And I'd like you to please join me in welcoming the Chief Executive Officer of the Confederation of Australian Motorsport, Mr Eugene Rocker. Uh, thanks, Cam. I actually had a prepared speech, but I might start with telling a story. Um, on Saturday morning, I got up at 5am, uh, flew to Queensland, uh, drove two and a half hours in the sleeting, sleet and rain. I was absolutely coming around sideways to a park or to a circuit called Morgan Park. Only those who are intimately involved in motorsport would know where that is, Bruce Keys and Mark Scaife, it's just out from a town called Warwick. And interestingly enough, the club that runs this venue were bemoaning the fact that um, they are volunteers, and that track, three kilometres, not much else around it, is generating a million dollars of turnover per annum. They're now in the stage of putting on full-time employees to meet the demand. They are booked out now into the end of 2018, and they're looking at the start of 2019. That's a small track, in a regional area, two and a half hours out of, out of Brisbane, and it, it really captures and encapsulates the passion behind motorsport. And from us, 
uh, CAMS, and I speak on behalf of my colleagues at Motorcycling Australia, I've seen Martin Ports here, um, the reality is that we are constrained only by the fact that we don't have enough tracks in this country. The last decent track was built some 20 years ago. Uh, the last track in Victoria was probably 30 years ago. And our sport has seen um, record growth over the last four years, something in the order of 40 per cent. Like we had about 19,000 licensed competitors back in 2012. We now have over 26,000. We permit over 2,300 events per annum. And that doesn't include private testing, corporate race days, hundreds of events that happen during the week that don't even register on the, uh, on the sort of economic matrix. So motorsport for us is about passion. We have a responsibility to keep it safe and bring in rules and regulations to ensure that it's sustainable and it's fair. But we're also equally passionate, and I'm passionate, we've heard the word passion a fair few times, about growing the sport. We've got record numbers of junior competitors, record number of women involved in the motorsport. And for us, uh, we felt a responsibility back in 2013 to try and measure um, some of the economic impact of the sport. And we commissioned Ernst & Young to, to, to conduct a report and they revealed back in 2013 that the direct economic output from motorsport in this country is over $2.7 billion. There are over 16,000 people directly employed by motorsport. The overall indirect economic output is nudging something like seven billion. Then you throw in the auto aftermarket, which back in 2016 was around about 11 billion. We're talking a lot of money, and that's four years ago. So we're comfortable now knowing that the only thing that really is needed to keep motorsport growing is investment in tracks. There's a chap out in South Australia who's laying down about $100 million on a venue called Taylor Bend, and that'll be up and ready, and that'll be the first track built in this country for some 20 years. We want to make sure that Mildura is the next track that's built. And it's really important that all of those who are here, including the MPs, um, the, the uh, people associated with the regional boards, um, tourism, understand the opportunity that is being presented here. And I've heard around the country plenty of opportunities. And there's lots of talk. And it's time now for us to actually start producing some more tracks rather than the one that's out of tail and bend. From an economic point of view, I've already, I've already spoken about that. From a tourism and visitation point of view, we're the third most, uh, third most watched sport in the country, the fourth most attended sport in the country. As I said, some 2,300 events under CAMS alone, and then you roll in Motorcycling Australia and all the other weekly activities that happen. When you've got a small volunteer club, two and a half hours out of Queensland saying, we need to put on full-time full staff because we're turning over a million dollars, the conservative figures I saw there of $1.3 million are absolutely down the bottom of the scale. There's a lot more to be made. And so from our point of view, we're passionate about motorsport. We congratulate um, the Mildura City Council because they have been committed to this and we've been proud to be associated. Bruce Keyes has put in uh, many hours of in-kind support, tens of thousands of dollars helping Mildura on elements of the case. And so we're in it to make sure that the, the sport continues to grow. And from my point of view as the CEO of CAMS, we are, we are not at a better point in time. You know, we have record numbers of competitors, permitted events, clubs. We have 560 affiliated clubs with 80,000 members behind them. They are in themselves communities of their own. And for us, again, the opportunity, and the thing that I regularly hear when I'm travelling around the country is we can't get on a track. And try to convince someone to give up a track day for a social event, they'll know which one they'll take. They'll never let the track day go because they've probably been waiting for five months to go in and have a spin. So we couldn't be happier with the progress to date. We would encourage government, um, and I know that there are members of both sides of the House, and uh, uh, I know that it's a very strong nationals area, but this is beyond politics. This is about generating some serious money, some serious money for the heartland of motorsport and Mildura for me, has proven itself time and time again to be you know, a good example of how DNA is in our, motorsport DNA is in our community. So um, private investors, reach into your pockets. Government, there's an election coming up. There's a real opportunity for you to shake some shekels out of the cages and make sure that this opportunity is given every chance to get off the ground because the work these people have put into this uh, and, and the, obviously the council, and Glenn and I have been going back now for two or three years, and Jared's obviously been working pretty hard deserves to be built. So it's a very simple message. We need tracks. Here's one that's ready to go. We need money to make sure it happens. And I think that uh, we can all look back on that 
when it does happen and remember this meeting and this function and hopefully there'll be some uh, outcomes that we can reflect back on and say we made it happen because there's lots of talk, we've actually got to walk the walk or drive the drive. So from my point of view as the CAM CEO, motorsport's in great shape, we need more tracks, we'd like to congratulate Mildura City Council for their efforts to date. We'd encourage you all to make sure that you, uh, if you're looking to invest in this venue, particularly government, the return on investment is staggering. There's not a track in this country, not a track in this country that's not making money and returning investment or money back into the community or money back into the sport. So thanks very much for, uh, for your efforts, Mildura City Council. So that's pretty much me now, but I wanted to hand over to someone who's one of our best ambassadors and spokespeople, Mark Scaife, OAM, is um, a five-time supercars touring car champion, six-time Bathurst winner, is motorsport royalty, and more importantly, is chair of the National Track, or the CAMS National Track Safety Advisory Committee. We could not have a better ambassador and spokesperson for the sport, so I'd like you all to give him a warm welcome while he says a few words about motorsport on top of what I've already added, so thank you. Thanks, Eugene. Very well spoken. It's a, uh, a very good rendition of where we are in terms of the status and the landscape of motorsport in this country and what actually happens in terms of the future of facilities being built around the country. Mildura Future Ready is a great slogan and uh, congratulations to everybody in the Mildura region for the work that's been conducted and the work that's obviously ongoing with government and private investors to try to get this thing properly off the ground. Um, one of the key things that I wanted to speak about, and I think a really important part of the way we go about these sorts of ventures, is actually about vision. It's actually about understanding what we need to do for the future to create not just the facilities, but the economic benefit and the regional benefit that comes along with these sorts of activities. And if you think back to the 1930s and you think back about Bathurst, that was a little tourist drive. There was a man who was the mayor of that time, Mayor Martin Griffin, who put a lot of work and took a lot of risks in terms of creating what was, as I said, a tourist drive into Australia's most famous racetrack. It was a small regional town, and today, three hours west of Sydney, in this small regional town, we have over 200,000 people across those days. We put Australia's biggest race on. It's almost 80 years since the mayor inaugurated that venue. We've put roughly 55 years of Australia's preeminent car race on at that facility, and we inject $60 million into the local economy, into the New South Wales economy based on that event. Recently, we sold 6,000 campsites in 38 minutes. Now, as a facility, we know how special Bathurst is and we know how it's embraced the Australian social fabric. Whether it's Labor versus Liberal, Ford versus Holden, Collingwood versus Carlton, we know that Bathurst epitomises our sport. But the requirement for us to do that is to actually place a race at a venue. And what we're thinking about in terms of what you guys have discussed and what you've worked on so far is creating something around Mildura which has a long-term effect for the region. We've got places like Calder that are no longer with us. We've got places like Amaru Park and Oran Park in Sydney that are no longer with us. The longevity of Sandown is questionable. So there are significant opportunities around Mildura and the regional tracks that Eugene just spoke of, like Tail and Bend. But when you think about Bathurst and you think about $60 million into the local economy, no wonder they want to build a second circuit there. That's the reality, because getting on a racetrack in this country is incredibly hard, especially the premium ones. If you go to Phillip Island or City Motorsport Park, you pay in excess of $15,000 a day and you cannot get on. And as you said before, Eugene, no one passes up a day at those places because it is the best experience. They're big, fast-flowing, European-style racetracks that are key to those markets in Sydney and Melbourne. But when you think about those economic impacts, some of the things that you have to reveal is not just the example of our Australian icon, our grand final of Bathurst. Talk the Gold Coast, 
$47 million as an audited number with Queensland Government into southeast Queensland per annum. Northern Queensland, Townsville, $27 million. Darwin, the top end, $20 million. Even Ipswich, $7 million per annum into Western Brisbane. So for me, out of the discussions and the presentations this evening, there is a real opportunity for Mildura to do something very special and to use that vision similar to the Bathurst scenario. And when you think about some of those metrics and you think about the ability to, to do what is a very special and a very uh, well-recognised and important role in terms of industry and employment, one of the things that's really important out of that, and we spoke earlier about it, was to spend over $20 million on a racetrack in that region. It's just as easy to build a great racetrack as it is to build a bad one, which is my, my message to you, Martin. If you're going to do it, do it well. And if you do it well, you'll get the benefits. And this year, we spoke about some of those metrics a little while ago, and Eugene took us through the EY numbers. But we've had more than 1.6 million people attend our events this year. We'll have 150,000 over this weekend at Newcastle. We've had 60 million cumulative audience across this year's supercar season. We've had 45 million website page views and in excess of $140 million, $141 million in terms of Facebook reach. And, and when you think about all those numbers and you put the top sport in perspective, you've actually got to have venues to conduct those things. And that's Eugene's point about doing these things nationwide to create those, those very important parts of the puzzle. And fortunately for us, we are the sport of the industry. So although we've seen unprecedented industry change, manufacturing in this country for the automotive sector has obviously changed uh, the most in our lifetimes. But people still need to buy cars, car companies need to sell cars. Over one million cars per year will be sold and those cars will need to be marketed and they'll need to be made, in terms of engineering validation, made suitable to Australian conditions. So to have venues is not just about enthusiasts and car clubs, it's about the industry. And the way the industry is going to evolve is going to be very, very strong in terms of the way that those people, in terms of car, uh, car companies and motorbike companies, continue to market and use those facilities. Road safety is a massive part. I love the idea of the driver training facility hooking to the racetrack because to me, one of the things that we don't do very well from a government standpoint is actually embrace the road safety and driver training aspects in our society. So as we move forward, these venues are very important for all the reasons we spoke about in terms of the sport, but the industry and employment opportunities are massive. And to me, as I said before, if we build something really good there, people will come and it'll be a great thing for Mulgera. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. That was uh, wonderful to have your, have your time and also hear your insights as well. Uh, really appreciated that. This project will deliver a lot to a region that has four times the national average for motorsport participation. Just take that in, four times the national average for motorsport participation. We've got some very strong numbers. So it's not just about the passion, they've already got the numbers there. So this is really a lay down Mazair case at the moment. So to talk a little bit and to shed some light on just how strong motorsport is in the region. We heard that they're here before, a couple of cousins that have done pretty well for themselves. I'm going to grab a couple of microphones for them. Can you please welcome up here three-time Australian Superbike champion, currently just won, uh, when we were up at Bathurst, Scafi, he was winning uh, the Australian Superbike Championship at Phillip Island, Josh Waters, and your 2017 Sandown 500 winner and rising star of the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship, Cameron Waters. Come and join me up here, we'll get nice and cosy up on the stage. Cousins involved in motorsport in a little country town. Uh, Cam, I'm going to start with you, mate. It's an um, it's a, it's a unbelievable record when we heard the numbers and the names of the people that have come out of that town. What is it about Mildura that breeds such uh, motorsport uh, champions? Um, yeah, I guess the participation rate is so massive in Mildura. We've got the speedway bikes, the cars, um, the drag racing, obviously... Um, the circuit racing guys as well and um, yeah Easter time we have the massive motorsport um, weekend up there and 
yeah, drags in so many different people across um, across the country to to Mildura for that weekend. And um, I guess you, you named all the names before of how many people um, have come from Mildura that are the champions. And um, there's still a lot of people coming through now, um, younger younger guys that um, are trying to do what I'm doing and Josh and um, like Lee Adams and all the other guys. So um, yeah, motorsports massive in Mildura. Well, we've talked about Speedway. We know you've got Speedway champions on uh, in cars and bikes, Josh. Uh, We'll, we'll talk to you in a second. What was it like growing up as a kid in that environment? You've got a cousin that's competitive. You're around some amazing competitors as well. It must have been pretty fierce back in the day. Yeah, it was unbelievable. And I remember going to the Speedway when I was a little kid and watching the world's best. That's what we had, you know, to, to watch. Lee Adams, Jason Crump, they were all world champions. Or if they weren't world champions, they were fighting for world championships. So um, the local, the car Speedway, you know, we seen awesome sprint cars, the best of the best always there. So it was, um, yeah, it was unbelievable. Well, let's talk about family. Uh, Cam, Josh, actually I might go back to you, Josh, because you were telling me um, speed runs in the family. Yeah, I think it's off our grandma. <laughs> so I've been told that she has a pretty good go. So um, yeah, I know that, that yeah, she doesn't. Would, would, <laughs> would, would grandma have appreciated a circuit back in the day then, I wonder? I think it'd be good for the uh, road safety to, to work out how she needs to slow down a little bit. But, um, yeah, lucky she passed it down to us. Yeah, it's, it was, it's great to hear. Bikes, cars, how did that happen? Cam, how did you end up in a car and not a bike? Um, yeah, I guess my cousins are racing bikes and um, my dad was always in the car stuff. So watched my cousins. They, they were racing bikes. I wanted a bike, but they said it was too dangerous. So went and brought me a go-kart and that's where it all started. So obviously going to the Speedway as a young kid, uh, watched my father race speedway and um, that's what I wanted to do so um, yeah obviously they're in the motorsport scene they were watching supercars and all that stuff so growing up I was watching Scafe and um, Todd and Rick and all those guys and that's what I wanted to do so um, for me growing up it was it was a bit of a challenge because I had to travel six hours to Melbourne or to Adelaide to actually drive um, a race car so um, yeah obviously if I could have had a circuit in Mildura it would have fast tracked everything for me but um, yeah, it was just growing up all around me and that's how I ended up in, um, in cars. Yeah, it's interesting you say that though because you've created Speedway talent because you had Speedway in town. You don't have a racing circuit. We've developed some wonderful talent in Madura for, for racing circuit. We've got a young rider in the back there, Ned Forkhead. He's uh, just come back from testing in Spain or having a crack at the Red Bull rookies. So congratulations. Josh, for a young rider coming up, how much of a difference is having a decent permanent facility in your hometown? Yeah, it'd be... It had been the world, and, and I was very um, similar to Cam, you know, it was always a six hour drive to, to go and have a spin on your road bike, because it's so a lot different to riding a dirt bike, um, so yeah, if, if we had that, then we'd be like the guys that we're trying to be like, you know, like Ned did, racing those guys, or trying to race those guys over in Spain who have that at their fingertips in, in the motorcycling world. Well, that's uh, the both of you at the top of the sport, but let's talk about your mates that you grew up with. There's a lot that goes on around the sport itself, isn't there? There's not just the driver. There's a lot of, of side benefit for, for mates in a local town, isn't there, Cam? Um, yeah, I guess they can, <coughs> sorry, they can come and watch and um, they support me. So um, every time I went out to race a speedway car, they'd, they'd come watch and um, they could be involved as well. They'd come in the pits and, and um, spanner and whatnot. And, um, Obviously, you can volunteer as well. So, um, yeah, it's really good for the community to get a lot more people involved in the in the whole um, whole sport, and um, not just competing in it, but it drags a lot of people to the to the community as well. Yeah, and you'd see that as well, Josh, wouldn't you, with the bikes? I mean, there's a lot of support in terms of mechanicing, engineering. There's an awful lot that goes into it, isn't there? Yeah, it's not just riding the bike or, or driving the car. You need the team around you, and um, even just like I, I'm fortunate enough to still live in Mildura, and it's sometimes a little bit difficult, but I love it back home and um, the people I train with, they're my mates and, you know, they're the reason why I go good because they push me at training so I'm very fortunate there and, and they love coming, you know, they all came to Phillip Island and watched and um, yeah, it was great. Yeah, very special moment for you again, three times, uh, you're going back around again next year? Yeah, I, I hope so, so yeah, I am, but um, yeah. It was a really special time and um, to win three championships is... I'd love to make it four and be the only rider that's ever done that in, uh, in the Australian Superbike Championship. Well, you're certainly going about the right way at the moment. And Cam, uh, mate, congratulations on that Sandown 500 win. It was really a breakthrough moment for you as uh, we know you've had a standout year this year, but uh, carrying massive confidence going into another next year next year. Um, yeah, this year's been like chalk and cheese compared to last year. So 
um, yeah, won Sandown, which was absolutely awesome. It's a career highlight. Um, to finally be racing in the main series is one thing, but to actually win a race, it's, it's unbelievable. So um, lots of um, confidence at the moment, and we're keeping that momentum rolling, and I'm really pumped for next year. So um, I think we've got a shot. We can win it. Um, yeah, we'll see how we go. And Newcastle will be good this weekend as well. So thank you very much. Please put your hands together for our two Mildura champions. Thanks, guys. Mark, you mentioned in your, uh, in your presentation tonight the fact that, you know, in, in our lifetime, so many, so many circuits have closed and we haven't seen too many open. How important is a project like this? Well, when you think about, you know, places like Calder that are not operating, places like Amaru Park and Oran Park, um, at Katoomba, we've obviously, uh, over a long period of time, Warwick Farm, there's been so many facilities that are now in big markets not operating. So, you know, what we need to do in the end, because uh, we love the sport and we're obviously all, all very enthusiastic about making sure that we ended up with the, right, with the right balance of these things, is to actually build some more facilities. And regionally, I think it's actually quite clever. So Tail and Ben's being done. There's a lot of chat about Toowoomba. Um, we've all spoken about a second circuit, Bathurst. This proposal from Mildura is a good one. So, you know, what we need to do in the end is actually have the right facilities in the right regions and spread the load in terms of the way that rolls out. When you look at the success of Bathurst, not just with the 1,000, but particularly now the 12 hours is a massive success, even the six hours now taken off. Why is it so hard to convince people of this business model? I mean, it just the, the proof is in the pudding, surely. Well, yes, it is, but it is a big investment. So it's, a, it's a, a bit of pill to swallow in terms of, you know, roughly $20 million to get a permanent facility up and running. So once you get by the first part of the puzzle, which is clearly having the right site in the right area, being able to do the business case and the feasibility properly, and then being able to properly determine the right sort of racetrack in the right area at the right cost, uh, it's actually harder than you think. Well, coming up this weekend, of course, is the uh, street circuit at Newcastle. From what we've seen so far from the uh, artist impressions from the computer generations, it looks spectacular. Uh, are, we, are we not going to be disappointed? Two-thirds of the racetrack uh, on the water, um, 12 turns, 2.6K, it's going to be fantastic. It's, uh, it's going to be one of our better events, and you know I'm looking forward to, uh, to getting there this weekend, there first thing in the morning, because it's, a, uh, it's going to be one of the signature events of our season, and certainly looking forward to Novocastrians enjoying our sport. Okay, well, no doubt we'll see you uh, on our TV screens over the weekend on Foxtel. But for now, thanks for coming tonight and thanks for joining us in Pit Lane. Thank you. Well, one of the speakers tonight here at Parliament House has been Councillor Glenn Milne from the, uh, from the Mildura Council. And Councillor Milne, how important is this, ven uh, this venue for Mildura and for the region? Uh, look, it's vitally important. If you look at the amount of motorsport champions that we've bred in the district, um, th this is just the next logical step, you know. You look at Josh Waters, Cam Waters, uh, the Kellys and all the rest of them. If we had a track that we could uh, run cars on and motorbikes on, how many champions would we have? And, uh, you know, we've got a, a number of other young fellows coming up uh, in both four wheels and two wheels. So this really will help us there. But the other side of it, of course, is the amount of money and jobs that will bring into the district uh, in terms of tourism, etc. So, uh, yeah, the quicker we can get it, the better. We've seen the effect of tourism at places like Bathurst, um, up at Ipswich for the Queensland Raceway. As uh, Eugenia Rocker and Mark Scaife were both saying, there is a desperate shortage of motorsport facilities in this country. It's, um, it's clearly a, a good business model. Why is it so difficult to get people interested? Yeah, that's a $64,000, oh, well, $20 million question, and um, we're interested. Which is not a lot in the, in the big scheme of things, is it? It's a tiny amount of money, and... Um, um, I, I mean, I'm a passionate motorsport nut anyway, but I can see the money. Like, you can, you can see the dollars, and uh, if you look at our Mildura 100 ski race, I mean, that is sensational. Absolutely fills the town. and You know, they're doing 140 mile an hour pulling two skiers up the river. It is unbelievable. On top of that, you've got the Hatter Desert race. Um, you know, they, they uh, booked that out in 15 minutes, I think, for the 600 positions that are available to race. And again, that packs the town. So um, we put on good motorsport events and, uh, you know, we just need some backing. And if somebody's got some money out there, you know, get the checkbook out and open it up because uh, we'd be happy to talk to you. 
The other thing that wasn't really mentioned too much during the uh, presentation was the fact that uh, you've got an absolute you know, brilliant Mediterranean cl climate up there. You would think that it would not only be available sort of, you know, for weekends, for club meetings and for state rounds, for that sort of thing, but surely you must be looking at a potential testing venue as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, if you look at the hot weather testing, Mildura is perfect. You know, 42, 43, 44 degrees in the summer. Um, ideal for that. It doesn't rain. It's not humid. And, um, you know, the rest of the year, you can pretty much bank on, you know, for a weekend, if there's going to be some rain, it might rain for an hour or a couple of hours. But if it doesn't work Saturday, you know Sunday will be fine. So, um, and, uh, you know, we don't have a lot of rain up there. So it is an ideal place. And, uh, uh, of course, it's a great place to come. The weather is not humid. So it's pretty clear weather. It's reasonably warm in the winter. And uh, we've got great accommodation, great wine, great food, great coffee, and yeah, we're nice people up there too. So, uh, and we love our cars. Anytime there's a motorsport event, everybody turns up. So, yeah, great place for motorsport. So, what's the next step now? We've seen the presentation tonight. What's the next step? Because we've had over the 20 years we've been doing in pit lane, we've heard a lot of these sort of schemes come up, and they've all they've all looked very impressive, but they've never gone anywhere. How do you get this one to move to the next step? Yeah, well, I've tried Tats Lotto, but that's not working. So um, I, I think, you know, the next thing is to, to go out and look. We need some investors, some private investors, and um, we're also looking to the government. We've spoken to James Molino, and he's Italian, you know, and he's very passionate about motorsport. Um, so he's a great supporter, and we've got other members of the current, you know, Victorian government. We've also got members of the opposition that see it as a good prospect. So we're hopeful that um, they see it as, a, a you know, a good way to spend some money and inject some jobs into uh, a country area. So if you of in pit lane are interested in getting involved in finding out, perhaps uh, lobbying their local members or uh, putting a bit of pressure on, where do they go to find out more information? Who do they contact? Uh, look, check the uh, Mildura Rural City Council website. You can give me a ring, 0409 521 886. Um, find us on Facebook. Uh, you know, uh, we're, we're not hard to find in Mildura. Just give the Mildura City Council a ring and uh, we'll put you on to somebody and uh, you know, show you who you can hassle, who you can uh, you know, maybe uh, try and uh, con to um, you know, get involved because uh, we're, we're serious about this and uh, it's going to be a, a great um, project for Mildura and it, and it really will continue our um, great legendary status that we've got in motorsport because we want to see more young champions developed but we want to see our community grow and tourism and this is a great way to do it. So get involved and get up there near the Murray River because it is a great part of the world. Well, all the very best with it. We hope that it comes off. I mean, we've spoken over the years on the program about the situation in New Zealand. I mean, they just seem to get on with it. And I think I think in the time we've been talking about all these circuits, they've built about five. So, uh, you know, let's get off our ass. Let's do this and get this done, OK? Well, well God, where are all the Kiwis? I mean, 10% of them are over here. So um, they better come up to Mildura, you know. In fact, my relatives are Kiwis, but I don't often admit to that. But, uh, you know, we, we'd be happy to... You have checked your dual citizenship status, have you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it uh, finished up my father. But, um, you know, if we've got Kiwis that want to get involved, you know, come and talk to us because uh, we just want to see it built and it will produce a really good financial return for whoever invests in it, and that's really important. OK, Tony Quinn, you're watching. Councillor Glenmill, thanks a lot for joining Thank us. Thank you very much.